ladies and gentlemen, I'm really delighted to be here. At the outset, I would like to thank for Japan Economic Foundation and the Philippine Development Institute. Well, the earlier speakers mentioned about a variety of populism. I would like to define picking up the most commonly used definition of populism among the political scientists. Well, populism could be defined a political approach that seeks to disrupt existing political order by solidifying and uh, the, the mobilizing the animosity of the common people against a privileged the elite and the establishment. Those privileged elites and the establishment, when they are corrupt, they tend to ignite the emergence of the populism very quickly. Politically, it has taken uh, sometimes left wing, right wing, and even centrist forms. Well, I would like to call the Latin American populism, which basically has been caused by a severe income inequality, because it has enormous implications of Korean populism you know, underway now. Well, recently, the global new normal have turned to a general public, uh, to a political candidate who have a anti-establishment credentials. This is uh, also partly what happened in South Korea. In South Korea, we had a presidential election in May, and South Korea again demonstrated a mature democratic political process. A swinging from a conservative ideology to people-centered, progressive, pro-labor ideology, back and forth. In fact, conservative parties they, they ruled in the past 10 years, now a progressive party came to power. Before a conservative party took the power, a, the progressive party, during Kim Dae-jung administration and Noemian administration ruled the country. So we can see that sort of the political cycle transferring power from a progressive party to conservative party. Well, here uh, in Korea, why this progress pro-labor uh, parties were able to come to power? Let me offer you several reasons. First rising income inequality. Korea's top 10%, the wealth and the income share has risen very rapidly among the Asia Pacific economies. And then a rising news unemployment. And perhaps third reason, we can see very acute dichotomies between Korea's a large conglomerate and labor intensive small and medium enterprises. So Moon Jae government promised a political and economic policy platform uh, by adopting first raising a minimum wage and uh, then transferring irregular workers to regular workers status. And uh, then a whole bunch of the very broad-based welfare programs for a low-income bracket people. And here, because I am the chairman of the Korea Commission for Corporate Partnership, I would like to introduce very briefly what the, we are doing. I mentioned that there is a very acute dichotomy between large conglomerate and small and medium enterprises. Within the Korea Commission for Corporate Partnership is to nurture a synergistic partnership programs between Korean jewels and uh, small and medium enterprises uh, through a public as well as private dialogue among 
representatives from big business community and small and medium enterprises uh, to carry on a set of the inclusive growth programs. And uh, well, the great challenge Korea face is how we can maintain optimum balancing between distribution and the growth. Well, in this regard, I'm delighted that the current Moon Jae-in government brought in a sort of two-wheel driven economic policy. On one hand, income-led growth, basically raising the wages for working people and the favoring labor unions, but simultaneously, the Moon Jae-in government brought in the concept of the innovation, innovative growth. So we have a one hand income led growth, on the other hand, a innovative program, especially suiting the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, Korea will continue to enhance transparency in government bureaucracy, as well as a business government, especially with respect to Korea's big conglomerate. And perhaps this could be a great task for Korea's a conservative ruling elite class. I think we really need a profound a applications and profound practice of noblesse, obligia spirit to ensure that conservative party will return to power sooner or later. Well, I want to mention very briefly Trump effect. President Trump he has involved a new wave of protectionism and unilateralism to protect American jobs and American interests. During the election campaign, he promised to scrap a Korea-US free trade agreement. He now changed uh, the hard-nosed uh, renegotiation between Korea and the US. And uh, it has, of course, a negative impact on the economic integration outlook of the East Asia and the Asia Pacific economy. In the short run, I believe that maybe the U.S. might gain some tangible benefit uh, through the uh, uh, Trump uh, isolationist policy. But later on, the, maybe America will realize that that is even harmful for the U.S. interest. I hope the U.S. will return to a open, a transparent, a global the, the, the economic system. And countermeasures, I really call that the uh, domestic populism open against international loans, values, and uh, trade liberalization. So TPP without the U.S., whatever form, should be reactivated the sooner the better. Uh, RCEP also needs to be accelerated to show the East Asian economic identity. And one reason to claim for this uh, regional effort is that to recognize a fourth industrial revolution. Many of our early speakers indicated that. Fourth industrial revolution dictates a cross-border collaboration and the regional value chains. So I think we should recognize the importance of this cross-border value change would be accelerated on the fourth industrial revolution. So in this regard, I think East Asia needs to upgrade our own economic system on an individual country basis to the, a global standard level. And uh, also, we collectively need to work a emerging uh, tide against globalization and the open trade terrorism and cyber attacks and North Korean nuclear ambitions must be stopped. And, uh, as, and also regional carbon emission market needs to be also reactivated. And finally, I would like to suggest that the, we might need some uh, regular and some informal dialogue mechanism among future de generation of leaders. A future that the the youngsters to work for the East identity, East Asian identity, and the open trade regime. Thank you very much.